the Masters is kicking off. And we are not even halfway through round one of 2023. We have some, well, I'm going to say right now, I have never had this much of a jam-packed video today, and I'm super excited to bring it to you, because we're going to be discussing number one, the 13th hole, and some of the players are seriously slagging off these changes that the Masters have done by making it longer. Number two, the Masters are potentially backing the rollback of the golf ball. Don't know how I feel about that. And the final one, Harold Varner the third. Well, it's safe to say, um, I don't think he's going to have many friends in the Live Golf League. Now, just put that in perspective, he does play Live Golf and his comments are, well, brutally honest. So we're going to go through all of this. Now, this is just actually a reminder that tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you a Masters Roundup of Round 1. So if you miss tonight's action, don't worry, subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell, and you'll get all the information as well as some hot gossip tomorrow morning. So first things first, what do we think of the lengthening of the 13th hole? So let me just put this into perspective. In 1934, the 13th hole measured 480 yards. In 2022, it measured 510 yards. This year, in 2023, it measures around 550 yards par 5. That is huge. Now, I know over that period of time, the technology of the golf clubs, the fitness of the players has improved dramatically. But I'm going to be brutally honest right now. Before we dive into what the actual players think of this, and some huge names, including Tiger Woods, has voiced his opinion on it, all I think it does is just make it a bomber's paradise. What I loved and what I love about the Masters, it's about craftsmanship. We all know it's not the longest golf course, but it doesn't have to be long. We know Amen Corner is Amen Corner for a reason because it is so, so tough. And those holes in the past years haven't been super long, but been super tricky. And the reason I love the Masters, it's the slopes, it's the undulation, it's the greens that it was its defence. It's not like a US Open venue where it's long and thick rough. It's the craftsmanship. And I really feel that lengthening the hole, it loses that charm but what do you think? Like, as always, with all these videos, guys, I want to get your opinion down in the comments. I value your opinion, so make sure you do comment down below what you think. So, let's dive into what some of these players think. And, not being funny, like, this is some little bit of slagging off here on the sly from some of the players. DJ said, now bear in mind that he is what we'd class one of the longest professional golfers. He hits it super, super long. He said, it most likely will be laying up all four days. Wow. So, if he's laying up, the rest of the field are laying up. That hole was risk and reward. You went for it. You had Ray's Creek to contend with, the green sloping away from you, it was a tough, tough hole. And it was tough hole going in with a short iron. Now, with a long iron, I mean, it just makes it a true par five. And for me, that takes the fun, that takes the Sunday out where people can make a run with eagles after good shots out of the equation. Out of the equation. We don't want that, do we? Okay, the next opinion, Rory McIlroy. He said he used to hit 8-iron in there from a flat lie. Now he'll be hitting 5-iron with the ball way above his feet. So if you're brand new to golf, when the ball is way above your feet as a right-handed golfer, that will cause the ball to move right to left considerably. Now that's going to bring all that trouble in down that left-hand side. So you've got to think, 5-iron, ball above your feet, very, very hard to create a strike. So again... If DJ's laying up, it won't be surprising if the likes of Rory is doing the same. The next opinion here, and this is where it gets a little bit juicy. Kevin Kisner has come out and said it just helps the Bombers more. And this is what I mean. You've got to think, if the longest players in the world are hitting five iron into this hole, what are the rest of the field doing? If you've got a five wood into the 13th hole now, you ain't going for it. You're going to have to be like Zach Johnson. When he won the Masters, he didn't go for any of the par fives in two. And I'm going to repeat this again. That takes the charge out on a Saturday and a Sunday for the lead. The eagle's thrown in there. The birdie's thrown in there. It makes it more of a defensive hole rather than an attacking hole. 
And I loved the attacking nature of the Masters. It really rewarded the player who was willing to take the risk and could pull off the risk. As you can see, like, I'm getting pretty passionate about this whole thing. Okay, the next opinion. Jordan Spieth totally disagrees with me. He said he disagrees it doesn't make the hole exciting. Well, Jordan, I'm sorry. I usually agree with most things that you say, but in this case, I don't agree with you. Scotty Scheffler's come out and said it's a longer, it's a lot longer, and definitely harder. Like, the shoot that you hit out of now is very much the same as what you have on the 18th. A very, very narrow window to hit down. So, yeah, makes it incredibly hard. Backing up the point that it's going to be a bir great birdie, not an eagle opportunity in my opinion. And final couple of opinions we've got here are from Freddie Couples. If I was 30, I'd probably be excited about the changes. Yeah, Freddie, you used to absolutely bomb it and you probably still hit it a lot longer than me. Um, so yeah, I can understand your comment. And the final one here from Tiger Woods. The days of hitting three wood, eight iron are long gone. It's going to be like Rory said, driver, five iron. Or for the most... It was mere mortals, driver, seven wood, five wood, three wood. And I'll repeat this again. We ain't going for it. So this leads me on to the next really jam-packed video here. And part of this story, rolling back the golf ball. So we all know the Masters have been very, very worried about keeping the integrity of the golf course, keeping the charm of the golf course. And they're getting very, very worried about the top long hitters over powering the golf course. Like, we had the likes of Bryson's comment a few years ago that it was a par 67, right? Um, so, I think they've obviously tried to take this into account. So, let's put this in perspective. If you roll back the golf ball here, so the ball would go on average 15 yards shorter. Let's just say for round numbers, it's about 5% difference, which for most long hitters, that'll be about 15 yards. You make this hole even harder. You take away the charm, in my opinion. You can't do both. You can't lengthen and be condone the ball rollback. But the Masters chairman, the Masters chairman has come out and said this. So, the Augusta chairman, Fred Ridley, said a few weeks ago, the RNA and the USGA proposed a modern local rule to, that reduces the distance of men's elite level. He also went on to say, as the comment period remains open, we, used, we will be respectful of the process the USGA and the RNA consider this important issue. We are being consistent in our support of the governing bodies and will restate our desire to see distance addressed. So, okay, I know it's not saying 100% we are going to use this because don't forget, it's a modern local rule. They can choose whether they want to use it or not. But he's pretty much saying that we will support them. And I really don't agree with this. And we know the likes of JT don't agree with this. We know the likes of John Ram doesn't agree with it. But we also do know the likes of Roy McIlroy does agree with it. Which won't be a surprise to most of us because he has been the poster boy of the PGA Tour in the last year or so. Ridley went on further to say, We have had a long-standing position that supports the governing bodies. I was very encouraged when I saw the areas of interest that were published by the USGA and RNA recently. I know there have been varying opinion, opinion I know there have been varying opinions among players and others that are stakeholders in golf, that being tightless, don't forget. And that's really how the process should work. I would add this so far. As I understand what is being studied, the part of the study would be not to be intended to make it more difficult or impose regulations that would make play more difficult for the higher handicappers that play. We are concerned about that issue. Growth of the game is a big issue, but our position would be to support the governing bodies and that if no action is taken, that for whatever reason, that we need to look at other options regarding our golf course and what we can do to continue the challenge and what we can do to continue to challenge these great golfers and maintain the design integrity initially adopted by Mr. Jones and Mr. McKenzie. Now, I 100% understand where he's coming from. We have seen this comment from commentators over the last few years that the top players are overpowering the golf course. But in my opinion... You lengthen the hole, you're changing the intended design. Now, I know things have to change and that's just growth of the game. But if you lengthen the hole 
and bring in the 5% reduction, supporting the governing bodies, you're essentially just making it better for the bombers. That is my opinion. Look, I'll back this with this comment. Zach Johnson won the Masters not going for any of the par 5s in 2, with the golf ball and with no lengthening of the holes, prior to lengthening the 15th as well. He is a player that obviously isn't short, but he's nowhere near the longest on tour. He won it with great wedge play, great craftsmanship, great putting, great short game. And that's my opinion of how I think of the Masters. That's what I think of the Masters. And yeah, you know what? That's what I'm going to say. But what do you think on that topic? Should the Masters condone the rollback? Should they be changing the golf course? How do we go about this? What do we do about this? Guys, I want to know your opinion. Okay. This is the juiciest story of the day. So, Harold Varner III is a live golf player. Now, he has been quoted, and this is really, really juicy. He's been quoted saying in the Washington Post this. Now, just to give you a bit more information on this story, Harold Varner III saw advice from Michael Jordan before making the decision to join Live Golf. Now, I didn't know that. And Michael Jordan is a huge name, not only in basketball, but in the world of sport. Now, I don't think he's going to have many friends, Harold Varner, um, after what he said here. Let Oh my God. Let me read this out to you. So Varner was speaking in the Washington Post and said the only reason he joined the tour was for money, not to help the grow the game. At least he's being honest, right? Most of these other players are like, no, no, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it to play less. I'm doing it for... The fact of I'm growing the game a different way. Mickelson said that. DJ's come out and said that. Um, we've seen a number of players really say like they feel that this is going to grow the game. Mickelson being the main voice on that. So he said, I actually can't use all the words, so I'll let you fill in the blanks. <laughs> they are full of S. Varna said that live golfers ahead of the Masters, they're growing their own pockets. I tell them that all the time. All of them. You don't come here to effing grow the game. Grow the effing game. You don't. You go in there to get more money. Now, at least he's been honest here. He said, the truth is, my life is changing. He said on Instagram, the opportunity to join Live Golf is too good of a financial breakthrough for me to bypass. I know what it means to grow up without much. The money is going to ensure that my kids, future Varners, will have a solid base to start on. Varner ended up with the message saying, I'm still me, I promise you that. But, you know what? Fair play. He has come out and said, like, look, I know I'm not really growing the game. All I'm going out there for is the money to secure a future. And can we blame him for that? I don't really know. All I know is that I know a few live gold players and potentially live CEOs will not be happy with what he said. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I know this is a jam-packed video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, I'll bring you round one Masters Roundup.